Hi, my name is Victoria Finley Wolf. I'm a Sizzix designer, and today I'm going to show you how to sew the tulip together. So, again, starting with your double wedding ring die set, is the standard basic double wedding ring. We're going to just use the concave square here, and we're going to cut out our shape with that. I've already pre cut my fabrics there. And I'm just going to lay out quickly that these are the pieces now for the, for the tulip die. When this all sews together, you are still going to have a, a large melon um, like the other die that I have. So this will go together but give you a different layout of design choices that you get to make. And I'm just going to lay these pieces together here quickly. And then we'll run both of these through. My pad on top and I'm going to run this through my Big Shot Pro. Okay, so now I have my pieces cut out. Uh, I have my yellow is the center, which is actually the, the flower part of the tulip. These could be in various shades of green if you wanted it to be more like a, uh, a flower garden. Here I'm using a palette of lights and blues and yellows. So I have my two pieces that will go there and my little top hat here. Um, again, when we start with any kind of curves, you're going to want to find your centers. So I'm very happy with just doing a little finger crease there to find your centers. You can chain piece these. If you cut out all your pieces for all four melons, or as many as you need to do a larger quilt, um, you can go through and just chain piece, you know, keep running these through your machine after you get everything pinned and ready to go. So I've pinned my center. I'm going to pin my ends. There is a straight cut on the end of these which shows you how to line up where the fabric is going to end and you put your pin in. This is a nice gentle curve, so after you use those three pins, that's all you need because of the preciseness of the Sizzix dies, the fabric, the raw edges will naturally line up very easy. Okay, so as we sew then, we're going to sew from one pin to the center, pull our pins out as we go, and sew to the final. Okay, we want that floppy arc again to be on the top. I call that my belly on the bottom. The standard piece goes on the bottom. Your floppiest arc goes on the top. And now I'm going to sew that together. Okay, it's a very gentle curve. So you don't have to rush it. You just sew slowly. And I'm going to give that a press, and I'm just going to press that seam to the outside. Okay, so it's a great one to start to learn how to do your curves because it is so short. It's nice and easy, gets a good hang of how to get those uh, curved raw edges to line up together. Now we have the bottom piece. These go together very, very quickly. You line up, there's a straight edge again which lines up with the straight edge that you're going to sew. This is going to overlap a tiny bit because that's where your stitching line for a quarter inch is going to be and you can just sew that straight across the end. You can put a pin in just to hold it all in place. Press that over. And we're going to see this is going to be the last side that we're going to sew on. Again, you have that nice little straight edge, so when you flip it right sides together, you can see exactly where you need to line that up. And you can put a pin in there to hold it all in place. You'll have a tiny little overlap on this side again. I'm going to give that a press. And now you've just made your full melon. Okay, you can bring it back to your centerpiece. You can line them up together. Right? So there's your little tulip. And now we're going to focus on how to sew the melons onto the concave square. Okay, so again, anytime you're sewing curves, we find our centers. And you can fold these in half. You can have the iron give it a good quick press. Gives it a nice crease in the inside there, or finger press it, however you like. Again, fold your concave square into quarters and give that a nice press so that you get those creases. That way you have all of your four centers ready to go. I'll start with my lining up my centers, putting in a pin. The way the melons are cut, there's a 90 degree on the corner before it starts going into a curve, you get a little point that's going to end right there on that arc. So that's your guide to know that you're going to do a quarter inch over that point. You're going to put a pin in there. That's how you know where to line up adjoining your melons to the concave arc. Okay. 
we only really need those three pins because of how precise the Sizzix dies cut. You can see already the way that I've pinned with three pins, my raw edges go together wonderfully. I don't have to pin more than that. I don't have to make the fabric do anything else other than keep my raw edges together. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew those together. Okay, I like to come back and just check, make sure I'm sewing everything together the way I want it to go together. So I can do the opposite side. So now I have the two end pieces sewn together onto my concave arc, and now we're going to put on the final two. Same thing, I've pressed my centers, right? So I'm going to line up, I'm going to put my pin in. Now the only difference here, which is actually makes it even a little bit easier when you get to this step, is we now have these raw edges that are going to work together, right? So I can line that straight up. I can put a pin in where the seams intersect just to hold that in place. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to put my ends together there. Again, I'll put a pin in where those seams uh, from the concave arc intersect. And you're going to do the same curve that we just did. Again, we only need those three pins because everything lines up very nicely. And then we're going to sew those in. Let me give it a quick press. Again, I'm just pressing those seams to the outside. Finger press our last seam, right sides together. Again, going all the way out and lining up my point and pinning it. Okay, I got my three pins again. I've pinned my ends so they're going to line up. I have my centers pinned. The fabric's going to line up nicely. Um, always making note that your floppiest arc goes on the top when you're sewing it. And now we're going to sew our last one together exactly as we've done before. Okay, there's our final melon. We're going to give that a nice little press. And there are the tulips all together on one ring. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can handle the color placement when you're playing with the tulips. Here we've just used solids and you can see how with all the greens together we'll make a whole other pattern in the inside. Here if I wanted to switch this around the opposite way I could have blue stars going all in the same direction. This time they're all going to make a slightly different pattern which I kind of like that little variation on it. This quilt back here I've used a combination of the tulip dye and the full melon dye and using the, the turquoise and white polka dots uh, as a nice soft background, kind of looking at how the negative space happens when I use the tulip dye, that the background piece here is the same as the concave square so that part of that dissolves into the background. So I can intermix the tulip dye, I can use the large melon dye to play with the layout on it and kind of give it sort of a lily pad feel to it. I like that little play on the variations that you can do with this die. And ultimately, as I was playing with this, I realized, particularly even when we look at this, how it kind of looks like little minion faces, even though it's supposed to be flowers, that you could also do Santa Clauses with the little face. Again, looking at the color placement and, and what kind of choices you're making. So you could have little gnomes, you could have little Santas. There's a lot of fun things that you can do. So that's the tulip die. It's easy. Don't be afraid of the curves and use the die as a place to experiment and play and have lots of fun with quilting.